So we're going to talk about pictures of truth. Now first we need to talk about where we get truth. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is the one who made everything. We believe that. We don't believe the world just poof and got here. The universe just happened an accident. God made everything. So if God made everything, then everything is true is God's truth. Let's look at this quote in here. Start my pictures. Uh, Kepler, of course, was a great astronomer, beginning scientist who was also a Christian. Science is a process of thinking God's thoughts for after him. In other words, the scientists, they don't uh, invent new science. They discover what was already true. Because what was already true is God's truth. When they discovered uh, that uh, Watson and Crick and a few decades ago, DNA, it wasn't like they just invented DNA. They discovered what God knew all along. So DNA is God's truth. God made DNA and everything else in the universe. So all truth is God's truth. Let's look at this quote from J.I. Packer. The evangelical is not afraid of facts. That's a Bible believer, for he knows that all facts are God's facts. He is not afraid of thinking, for he knows that all truth is God's truth. All truth is God's truth, and right reason cannot endanger sound faith. We're not afraid of true science, of true uh, understanding of that. It's when they get their opinions and stuff they don't know, but when people have true science, that is God's stuff. God did that. So we get our truth from reality. From reality, the way things must, because that's what God made. Then we also get it from the Bible. All scripture is inspired by God. And it's useful to teach us what is true. How do we know what is true? The Bible tells us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work, which is why we can never get away from the word. If we ever get away from the word, it's just everybody's opinion. Who, what do you do this? What do you do that? I love this quote from Matt Chandler. If you're not confident in the authority of the scriptures, you will be a slave to what sounds right. And that's where we are right now. Everybody says, well, yeah, a few years ago we thought it was this way, but now we see this is right because that's what they're saying on everything. It's supposed to be. We're just whatever sounds right instead of what the Bible says. I put a quote in the bulletin. Uh, when men stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. You understand what I'm saying? When you stop believing in God, it's not that they don't believe in nothing. Then anything is possible. When you take away the foundation based on uh, Bible truths, and our country was based, and, and, and Western, the West, was based on Bible principles and truths. When you take away that, then you do whatever you want. Whatever you feel like. Whatever the consensus is, is right. This is right, that's right, and that's where we are now because we don't have a basis for truth. So I, let's follow what this little girl said. I don't care what it looks like, God's word has a final say. So <laughs> she is right. That's the way we need it. That's what we need to settle on. And also third, which is where we got the idea for name our church, and the word became flesh and dwell among us, and we have seen his glory, the glories of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So we know truth from reality, because all reality is God's truth. He made the universe. All the laws of the universe are what God made. All the laws of male and females, and, and how people get along, and what they're made up of. That's God's truth. He made that. We get it from the Bible, what he's revealed to us. He hasn't revealed to us everything, but he's revealed to us enough that we know how to live. And from Jesus, who showed us what the Father was like. So, this is where we get our truth. And, and so, you know, we need to understand that. So, Ephesians says, be careful how you live. Here's what we need to do. Christians, here's what we need to do. Believe what you believe. You know where it started? It started way back in the early 1900s when a certain group of churches quit believing the Bible. 
They still said they were Christian churches, but they didn't believe Jesus rose from the dead. He didn't believe he was the way of salvation. They didn't believe there was a life after death, but they were still Christian churches. And you know what happened to those churches? They were the first one to sink. But then I'm afraid even some of the other churches, we started acting like, well, we're not so sure, and hemming and hawing. Believe what you believe. You either believe there is a God, Jesus Christ is his son, who died on the cross for our sins, rose again on the third day, is the way of salvation, or you don't. Amen. One or the other. And if you believe that Jesus is, I know, I, I've only got two weeks, I've got to get with it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then believe what you believe. Christian folks, we've got to believe it and live it. And quit being on the fence according to, who, according to who's around. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So here we go. Here we go. With some pictures of truth. Your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers, or you can grow weeds. <laughs> you say, well, I, you know, I like corn and a few green beans and maybe some watermelon. So what should I plant? What seeds should I get? Whatever you want to get corn and green beans and watermelons? Well, Bill, let's think about that. <laughs> if I plant... <laughs> I put Bill on the fly and he said, I'm going to get richer. <laughs> if I plant tomatoes, am I going to get corn? No, you're going to get tomatoes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I knew you knew it, Bill. I just had to make sure. But if you weren't corn, you, you wouldn't plant tomatoes. That's right. <laughs> right. Bill got it. He's got it. If we want the good qualities in our life for Jesus, then we got to plant the right seeds right here and here. That's what that's saying. All right, I'm not spending time anywhere. All right. Here's the old, I, this is years old. Two people on a donkey back, poor animal. They're criticizing, so they said, all right, we'll just have one. He's making his wife walk. How cruel. Well, they listen to criticism again, so he puts her on the e-walk. Letting his wife ride on you? How stupid. So they listen to criticism. They both get off. What idiots. They don't even know how to utilize a mute. <laughs> <laughs> This is our society. No matter what you say or what you do, somebody's not going to like it. And you know what? Rob the mule what you think is right no matter what they say. Okay? <laughs> all right. Every single day you make a choice. See, this guy, he's looking at all the rocks. He's looking at a beautiful view and he's smiling. When Sandy died, all I could think about was what I lost. All I could think about, and that made me sad every day. I finally had to come to a place where I'm thankful for the time we had together. I'm thankful for the people I have in my life now. I'm thankful for the good things I have. Now, I still grieve some over the loss I had, but I can't stay there. I have to be thankful. So we have to choose what we focus on for our own attitude. All right, we're rushing on. I don't know if you guys ever saw this thing on Facebook where somebody would say, now, you say this prayer or sign up on a list and in 14 days you'll come into money. Anybody ever seen one of those? Yeah. That's nonsense, by the way. <laughs> and you might want to rethink whoever. No, I'm not going to. They're still your friend. Just don't, you know. But I like this one. Get a job. Do this and within 14 days you'll come into some money. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Get rich quick schemes and the lottery, which is the big be a tax on the poor. That's not the way. <coughs> the way is to get a job, then you, you do, do what is right. And we, we gotta watch out. Follow God's principles about money. I don't wanna I don't read this whole thing, but the first crusade began in 1095, 460 years after the Christian, the first Christian city was overrun by Muslim armies. 443 is after they plundered Italy, and on and on how the Muslims conquered a lot, big part of the world. I'm not knocking Muslims today. I'm just knocking people who forget history, who change history, who subvert history, and say that only the Christians were bad. That's another, just another sign that Christians are no good, the Crusades. Well, guess what? They are just defending themselves from an attacking army. Subversive people are lying about history today. And we've got to watch 
what we believe on the headlines of history. Slavery did not start in 1619 in America. The Roman Empire was built on slavery. It's been slavery since the beginning of history. Is slavery a bad thing? Yes. The Muslims uh, enslaved millions of white Europeans over the centuries. It started all the way because it goes to the evil in the heart of mankind. And so don't listen to people who tell you America's bad because they started slavery. What nonsense. People ignore history. All right. You only live once. So make sure you spend 15 hours on the internet desperately seeking validation from strangers. Okay. Now I'm not saying you can't have a smartphone, internet, but don't waste your whole life on the thing. Really. And uh, enough said on that. <coughs> I like this quote from former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. If you are taught bitterness and anger, you will believe you are a victim. You will feel aggrieved, and the twin brother of aggrievement is entitlement. So now you think you're owed something, and you don't have to work for it. You're on a really bad road to nowhere because there are people who play to that sense of victimhood, aggrievement, and entitlement, and you still won't have a job. Wow. <laughs> Politicians go with that. They want to make, now, sometimes you are a victim. If somebody robs you, you're a victim, but don't identify as a victim. Oh, poor me. And I try to be listening to every job I get, people don't like me. Everywhere I go, people don't like me. I'm just hoping, well, maybe you've got something to you know, and, they, some people, and so now we've got politicians who want to make everybody victims so they will get elected. And we've got to quit listening to that stuff. Oh, look at this one. If Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. They're talking about if Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because they're, what are they doing? They're blaming Christians for whatever they, whatever they call a mess, for the, not a, a okaying whatever choices they make. And let's understand right now, there's a lot of haters blaming Christianity for everything now. And uh, I'm not saying we hate back. And there's the temptation, hate back. You see much anger is on in America these days? Just everybody's mad. And there's people always stuck in that. And we've got to be careful that we stand for the truth without hating. All right, here's another good one. The church is not a cruise ship. There are no passengers. It's a hospital ship. We are all crew. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing I think a lot of times we do never do get through in the church. That we all have a job to work for Jesus, not just the pastor, not just the deacon, or not just the song leader. Everybody has a part. And you guys have been good at that, but we need everybody involved. All right, this is sort of like that. I would jump is following you because you're picking it up. You pick it up, throw it in your pickup, and there it is. So quit picking up porn, and quit picking up hate, and quit picking up negative and pride and gossip. So uh, change what you allow in your spirit and pray, lead us not into temptation. All right, how about this one? If you eat today, thank a farmer. If it's on your table, thank a trucker. If you eat in peace, thank a veteran. Which is good considering Memorial Day is tomorrow. Uh, I, I really noticed magnified over COVID, this idea that we need to listen to the arrogant elites. That the Hollywood crowd, who we pay a whole lot of money, you know how they get their money? They, they memorize lines that somebody else wrote. They don't have to be all that bright, okay? So why do we think we have to listen to their opinions? Ooh, yeah, boy, he's getting all over the place. Why do we have to listen to LeBron James, who's always faking that he get hit anyhow? Am I right? Oh, well, you know, why do we listen to professional athletes and arrogant elite CEOs of companies give their opinion as it's come down from on high? All I'm saying is just be careful who, we don't have to glorify what everybody else glorifies. You know, let's lift up teachers and preachers and, and uh, electricians and people who work down at the plant and, and farmers and truckers and our veterans who risk their life because when they signed up, they didn't know they wouldn't be sent to war. Let's lift them up and know they don't care that much. Whether they had another marriage or another divorce, or they, you know, and they tell us what to do. Celebrities, 
deliver us from celebrities. This is Yad Diesel, a Holocaust survivor. He says, some of my friends ask why I poach so much political stuff. Here's my answer. Always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Whoa. If we don't tell the truth, people will only hear lies. Now this is getting into the hard spot now in our society. What do we say? And I'm not saying be rough shot. I'm not saying to go to work Tuesday and tell everybody off. I'm not saying that. But we have to stand for the truth or who will. All right, let's go to another area. This church in the Philippines flooded, but they still met for worship. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'd have been there that day. You know, <laughs> what's swimming around that water? But I think we get the idea. Some people in a lot of countries where they're persecuted, where they're in danger of lives even going to church, go anyhow. Where they're in danger of having a copy of the Bible, get one anyhow. And I think what's happened in the West, in Western New York and now in America is we've got so sissified, we can't go anywhere where it's not just perfect. And I want to commend you for going to a storefront church where sometimes it smelled like bread when you came in, but you came anyhow because that's not the main point. Whether it's perfect or not. The main point is, are we living like Jesus said or are we teaching the truth? That's what the main point is. And the more we get sissified and American got to have everything just right and we're not willing to give up and help anything that isn't, the more we're going to go down, down, down. I told you I was going to, it's my left. I got two more. Let me get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Beware of destination addiction. What is that? A preoccupation with the idea that happiness is the next place, the next job, or next week. Or the next vacation. Or I'll be so happy when these kids get out of diapers. Or I'll be so happy when they go to school. Or I'll be happy when they can drive so I don't have to run to the store all the time. I'll be happy when they graduate. I'll be happy when the kids come home and see us. You know, be happy now when they're little fellas. And when they're teenagers. Be happy now. Destination addiction. All right. This view is brought to you by Almighty God. <laughs> I like that attitude about life. I don't know how many of you on Facebook, Roy is always picturing uh, the sunset or the lake or, you know, just beautiful things and saying something about God. I like that because, you know, you don't even have, I look at my, and you got woods right there, but it's trees and it's grass. I see the sun. I see birds flying through the air. I see rabbits. I see squirrels. I see durrell. Dear, thank God for the beauty we have everywhere. And let's look at it in that way. This isn't a way to worship God. In all of God's glory, what he's given us. Oh, Adrian Rogers gives a good quote. If I please Jesus, it doesn't matter who I displease. Mm -hmm. If I displease Jesus, it doesn't really matter whom I please. Wow. That's strong. George Washington said, real men despise battle, but will never run for it. from it. I don't <coughs> like the fight, but we can't run from the battle that is so important. We have to be willing. If you dislike someone, dislike them alone. Don't recruit others to join your cause, which is such a temptation. Isn't it? Oh, let me move on. This one's so important. Sometimes you don't even realize what God is doing for you. And you see the guy, he's walking down the sidewalk, and here's a, he's trying to be attacked by the forces of darkness, and he got the forces of God and light trying to protect him. One of the ones I almost preached today was about Daniel, about how life doesn't always go as planned, because it didn't go as planned. Judging this church was not the plan. My wife dying. His age was not the plan. Life often doesn't go as planned. Daniel and his friends were taken from their home country to a country with other gods. Life didn't go as planned. How did Daniel react to that? Someday maybe I will preach that. But when I was reading it, 
I saw a part where Daniel was praying and an angel came to him and he said, I would have come sooner, but I was opposed by the forces of darkness until Michael came and rescued me. And I went, what? I was reminded, why? What is going on? Came, when he prays, came to angel, came, and there's a fight between the forces of good and the forces of evil. In another place in the Bible, one of the prophets, he, he was tell, see, God would you open his eyes and he saw the forces of angels there. And he says, is that stuff really real? Yeah, it's in the Bible, it's real. There's forces of darkness and the forces of good in the work, and that's going on now. I believe what is happening today in America and in the West is spiritual darkness, a spiritual warfare that we're in the middle of, and we can't just take this and that that's just the way things go. Who, who, America has sent out more missionaries, supported the gospel cause more than anywhere else, and now we're being just attacked. And I do think, and we don't, this is, there is an unseen world. I put this one out in the email. I like this one. Parents listen to their son's transplanted heart beat in the chest of the recipient of his gift. And you see those parents just crying. And that's, wow. Just to think that some part of their son lived on. There's only one race, the human race. I don't like talking about races. Like there's some kind of difference. They're all created by God. I say we're all related. And this is another point there. All right, here's a good one. Anybody ever played Monopoly before? All right, you're playing Monopoly, but after every round, and it's new, when every trip around the board and you pass go, if you've got the most money, you must give a piece of your property to the player with the least. Same goes if you have a house hotel. And instead of collecting $200 if you're the leader, you pay an income tax of 35% of your money and split it between the other players. How would you like to play it like that? Soon no one is buying property, houses or hotels. Eventually everyone quits and tries just waits for their hand out when someone else passes go. Socialism in a nutshell. Now you are getting, I know I don't get very political, and this is not my main goal, but this is a Bible thing. The Bible does support you own your own property that you get what you work for. It does not support communism. And we have people who are actively <laughs> trying to subvert our government, a way of living, and most communist governments are anti-God. We don't want to go there. They lack freedom of religion, and we don't want to go there. So this is a Bible thing, and I just, like I said, I just got a whole lot of things I want to say. All right, person, I want to do such and such, a biblical church. Go ahead. Person says, but you think that's wrong. Yes, I do. Because you want to control me. No, you can do what you want. But you think that's wrong. Well, yes. But I do want your ultimate good. But I want to do it. Free to do it. But you say it's good. But I want you to say that it's good, and I cannot say that. So the person says, why do you hate me? <laughs> now, that's where we are today. If we take a stand on some morality, we have to uh, cheer for it not just to have our stand. And I say we cannot cheer for it. We have to love them and help them and tell the truth. That's the best way to love them. All right, be a rebel. Get married. Start a family. Love Jesus. Teach your kids to think for themselves. Buy land. Turn off the news and refuse to live in rear. That's what it looks like to be a rebel today. <laughs> The people who hid Anne Frank were breaking the law. The people who killed Anne Frank were full of following the law. And you know who Anne Frank is back in World War II in Amsterdam. The law is not, let me say, not always a moral compass. Now, again, our laws were based on the Ten Commandments and the Bible. But now as they go away from them, we need to remember that just because some, you get 51% of the people say this is the law, doesn't mean it's right. Just like it wasn't right when they said you can't hire a Jewish person. All right, I don't want to make anybody mad with this one. I just want to say this is true. There would not be a continuance of people if it weren't for heterosexual marriage. That's God the way God made. I'm not trying to make anybody mad, but the thing is, there's a lot of people where I said that they would knock me down. 
just saying that, that the truth, which is biological truth and Bible truth. That as we go away from this, we go away from people less having children and less away from God's plan. This college girl got a zero on her assignment recently. Why did she get a zero? Because she put in there the term biological women. Because she said, had dared to say there is such a thing as a biological woman, <coughs> zero. You don't get to count it up. That is happening all over the place. They're marginalizing people who have any different belief, and they're firing them, demoting them, not promoting them. They're giving them, failing them in school. Another woman I read about did all the things to get the, her master's degree, but when the got ready to give it, you have to sign this statement that you believe in transgenderism. She wouldn't sign it, so they did not give her a degree. Wow. Even though she passed all her courses. That is happening all over America now. It is, and if you say it isn't, then you get out before you call me wrong, you get out and look and see if it is. It is. I'm telling you. We are being marginalized, and what we have to do is not just say, take it. Push back for everybody else's good. All right, look at this picture. Kim, it says, this is the swimsuit 23 this year, Sports Illustrated Edition. The only thing about that is, is Kim is a man. Whoa. It's a biological man with tape. I really hope men are done with Sports Illustrated. I hope they are too. The cover of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition is a man. Here's another article just happened in the last week or two, March, uh, a few weeks, months. Why waking up early is rooted in white supremacy. <laughs> you white supremacists, sleeping. <laughs> it's like nonsense is being promoted everywhere you look. How can we get stupider? No, I can top that, I can be even stupider. I like this from Lee Strobel, who used to be an atheist. <coughs> he was a Chicago Tribune news reporter, but he said, to continue in atheism, I would need to believe that nothing produces everything, that non-life produces life, that randomness produces fine-tuning, chaos produces information, unconsciousness produces consciousness, and non-reason produces reason. I simply don't have that much faith. <laughs> And anybody who does not believe in God is a who believes in evolution, the world came here by proof without God. This is what they have to believe it by faith. They do not have proof. They're taking it by faith. So ask them. When they start condemning what you believe, what do you believe in why? This guy here has got more common sense most about anybody you're going to hear, Dr. Thomas Sowell. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. <laughs> Let me see, think politicians. <laughs> Susie Homemaker says, the gospel sounds very strange to a generation that's been told they're perfect. Why do I need a gospel? I'm perfect already. Loving themselves is virtuous. Their heart is always right. I can do what I want because that's what I believe. Eventually, let me say this to all this nonsense, Eventually, it collides with reality. Just like communism. It collides with reality in everything. I think today a lot of the French Revolution. The French Revolution, they kicked out the government, which I don't blame for kicking out the king. He was oppressive. But they went, and it got worse and worse and worse. They clicked out the church. And then they had a, you had to take another step to prove you were good enough. So they started executing people with the guillotine. And then but they, those who helped the revolution, they weren't good enough, so they started killing them. And then those were good enough, so finally Robespierre, one of the great leaders, was put under the guillotine himself. And finally what happens, what happens all over the place, a strong man, Napoleon. Finally you get a dictator, Stalin, Mao Zedong, somebody comes in, it will not go forever in chaos. And I'm telling you right now, if we don't get back on board, it's going to go to more and more chaos. We will not end up... <coughs> with this on and on, we'll end up with a dictator. He may be on the right, he may be on the left, but we will end up with a dictator if we don't keep the freedom 
we have now. Repentance is not when you cry. Repentance is when you change. If you, oh, I love this one. And if a child can work a tablet, a phone, or a game, they can work a broom, a mop, and dishes. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> the parents and grandparents, we need to make sure they know that. It's not good for them to think that they don't have to do anything until they're 21 and they get out of college because then they don't want to do a thing either. All right, brave heart. If you stay silent in this war between good and evil, your life might be easier, but your children won't. You know, at my age, I, I, I can coast and probably be all right, but what about my kids? What about my grandkids? What's this world going to be for them if we stay silent, if we don't tell the truth? And think of this whenever you hear, when you want, read the news, if you do, when the wolf tells a story, the shepherd is the enemy. <laughs> Who's telling the story? What's their agenda? I like this. Just because I disagree with you does not mean I hate you. We need to relearn that in society. And we do have some voices of reason in society. And God bless them to keep it up. Oh, wow. This one. It's only a short trip. Now, not only enjoy it, but use it well. Some of us who've been around a while say, wow, how did I get this many years on my birthday? No one cares when you bring up Muhammad or Buddha or Krishna, but the moment you say Jesus, people get uncomfortable. I should tell you something. I think it does. Why do Christians, why do Muhammad, why do Muslims get a pass on a lot of stuff and they get Christian? Because it is a spiritual warfare. Here's where we are with hate in our society today. If you're a white woman, well, she's got women, but if you're a white woman and are currently pregnant with a white baby boy, do us all a favor and take a trip to Planned Parenthood. In other words, kill it. Kill it. It's a white boy. Kill it. And this is not just a few people. This is a lot of people have this idea. Now, that's racism and sexism combined, but it does not get called out. It does not get canceled. It gets approved. That is wrong, 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 wrong. And I hope we can get it. That that is wrong, and we don't let stuff like that go. If somebody says that in your presence, then please tell them, my pastor said you shouldn't say that. That's not right. You're sexist and you're racist, and you're talking about killing babies just because of, that's not right. I just had a little baby grandchild boy, a white baby boy. And the thought of somebody saying she ought to kill it just makes me a little bit aggravated. How about you? And if we can't get aggravated over stuff like that, woe be unto us! If you're sitting here saying, why is he talking about this stuff? Woe unto us! If we can't get aggravated, aggravated at that. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And I think that's where we are today. For one reason or another, and we say this men, men have got weaker and weaker. I'm not saying you have, but in our society, maybe we felt we had to let the Women be strong, and I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm for women and men, okay? But weak men don't help us. All right, these images from research will show that babies in a womb can possibly wreck. Look at the little baby smiling with a good taste. Now, I'm not going to preach a message on abortion. But what we know when women say, this is my body, I'll do what I want. If it is your body, you can do what you want. If you want to cut any part of your body out, that's your body. But we know now it's not your body. It, the total new person with its own DNA, already reacting to things in the womb. And if you say, well, I don't know when it actually becomes a person, let's give it the benefit of the doubt and not kill a person. Because I believe that inside that womb is a precious, unborn human person. Now, 
Moving on. We have staked the future of all our, this is James Madison, Father of the Constitution, on the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves, and to sustain ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. Yes, America was built on a biblical foundation, and when we go away from that, that's why we get more and more anarchy. But this guy is really getting tough today. I'm going to can't believe that Richard. I love this one. Last year marked 200 years since Karl Marx was born. Here's a list of the top five nations where his idea brought prosperity. <laughs> you can't name me one. Name me one where communism brought prosperity. There isn't one. Because it goes against human nature. It goes against reality. I was a teenager in high school when I read the Communist Manifesto, and I said, this won't work. Uh, and again, it is against, against God. It's against us, and I, I hope we don't swallow that, because more and more people do want it. Conformity is doing what everyone else is doing, regardless of what is right. Morality is doing what is right, regardless of what everyone else is doing. And this is in money, this is in stealing, it's in lying, it's in sexual matters, it's in all these things. What do we do? We have the idea for truth. Let's follow that. C.S. Lewis, when the whole world is running toward a cliff, who is running in the opposite direction appears to have lost his mind. <laughs> They're all ready to the cliff, and we're going, no, that ain't the way. What's the matter with Richard? He's going the wrong way. All right, I'll, I may cut it short here. I don't want to lose you. New future game show. Sorry, Arthur, your answer was actually correct, but Paul shouted his opinion louder, so he gets the point. And an extra bonus goes to Sue, because she was offended at your answer. I think that's great. Who would play a game like that? But yet that's the game that is now getting rigged in America. And if you hadn't had run into it yet, I'm glad. Again, Thomas Sowell, the problem is that John can't read, or even then he can't think. It's that he confuses thinking with feeling. And we all go by our feelings now. Here's a good one. What offends you now? They haven't told me yet. <laughs> like a bunch of sheep. All right, I like this one from Harmon Kilbrew. Some of you remember oh, Harmon, baseball player? Anybody old enough to remember? Yeah. My father used to play with me and my brother in the yard. Mother would come out and say, you're tearing up the grass. We're not raising grass, Dad would say. We're raising boys. <laughs> I like that. I like a nice clean house and nothing there for getting tore up, but that's not as important as people. Having people over, raising kids, having grandkids, that's more important than house beautiful. I like this one. God is in control, but he doesn't expect you to lean on a shovel and pray for a hole. <laughs> you got to do something. Someone asked me to explain my views on racism, and I sent them this picture. Those two eggs on the outside look the same, but you'll eat either one of them. They're the same inside. Right? That's right, man. All right. Victor Frankl, freedom is not the last word. I believe he was also a Holocaust survivor. Freedom is only part of the story and half the truth. The positive aspect of freedom is responsibleness. That is why I recommend that the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast be supplemented by a statue of responsibility on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give Thomas Sowell again. If you ever want to say, I need some common sense today, look him up. See what he's saying. We seem to be getting closer and closer to a situation where nobody's responsible for what they did, but we're all responsible for what somebody else did. All right, let's move on past atheism. All right, I want to see this picture with the guys. Let's go on past this one. Look at this. The future is female. You know what I think about these guys? <laughs> this is our problem. Did your boss take you to wear that shirt? Did your wife take you to that shirt? Sissy. He said, what? what's wrong with that? The future's not female, and the future's not male. The future is male and female. That's the way it's been from creation, the way it always be. I don't care what t-shirt you wear. And you're going to show me your sis if you wear that shirt, and I hope none of y'all wore it this week. 
I don't go for that kind of stuff. That's the kind of thing that's killing us. We're advocating any kind of, of masculinity and saying it's and going along with conformity that masculinity is wrong. Masculinity is not bad. Some people who are masculine done bad things, just like some people who are feminine have done bad things. And we got to quit swallowing these lies. Woo! I like this one. He's probably thinking about some other women. And here's his thoughts. Race car spelled backwards is race car. <laughs> Why do I like that? I like that because men and women are different. And a lot of times women are thinking about the intricate thoughts about how women, and the guys are just thinking about, I gotta get the car fixed and I gotta pay this bill. Because men and women are different. Viva la difference. Fill in the solutions. The problem is you fell on the playground and you scratched your knee. The solution, get up and deal with it. <laughs> a lot of times that's what we just gotta do. Is it a boy or a girl? We'll let the kindergarten teacher decide. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now someday. Last one, last one. Now I've never said the journey would be easy. Say the arrival will be worthwhile. All right, I know I spit a lot of stuff at you. I got a little excited sometimes. But I do believe there is truth. All truth is God's truth, the Word, reality. And we need to stick with the truth. No matter what it affects us, bad or good, because there are other people who need us to stay with the truth. Because God is watching, He wants us to stay with the truth. And I hope God will help us, as the song said, to be courageous. I know I need help with that.